This Dama Gazelle is considered a miracle to some. Not just because it's a newborn, but also because it's part of a critically endangered species. There is said to be less than 500 of them left in the wild. The joyful birth took place last month at the National Zoo. That may surprise people, especially those who remember a zoo with small rooms, concrete floors, and barred windows. Animals perform tricks, often after brutal carrot and stick trainings. Zoos were built to entertain people with little concern for their star attractions. In the 70s, zoos reacted to negative perceptions by banning animal performances and creating settings that mimic the animal's natural habitat. Around the same time, the plight of endangered animals became a growing public concern and stronger laws were passed. Zoos began to make conservation their number one priority and they attracted funding and biologists. The hub of the National Zoo's conservation efforts is 70 miles west in a rural part of Virginia where a group of scientists are looking for ways to enhance the reproductive efforts of some of the world's most critically endangered animals. So the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute, which occupies 3,200 acres of land here in the rolling hills of Virginia, is home to a number of endangered species. Cheetah reproduction is a focus of the Institute. There are now five to 8,000 cheetahs left in the world. It's hard breeding cheetahs because of low sperm counts and inbreeding. So it's really important for cheetah breeding programs to be set up with really large enclosures for the cheetahs. Usually off display from the public helps, they are a high stress animal. Being surrounded by maybe a deer or something to look at really is stimulating for them. Um, boredom is a kiss of death. And in keeping the males separated visually from the females is also really important for breeding cheetahs. So what we do is we hide all the females, we put them all in the buildings, and then we bring the males down Lover's Lane, down into the female's yard to smell around her yard. And we go off the male's reactions to her smells if she's in estrus and ready to breed or not. So that male will get excited and start chirping, and it's called a stutter bark, and he'll be calling for the female to try to find her. And so then we let the female out of the building and do a fence line introduction and see how they interact through the fence first and see if they're looking like they want to be together. If we see all the right signs, we will put them in together and hope for the best. The Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute is one of the few places that have been successful at breeding cheetahs. It produced four litters of cheetah cubs in two years. Mary Neri talks about another animal that was literally on its last leg the black-footed ferret, which was declared extinct in 1979, until a barn dog named Shep discovered the last 18 in Wyoming, including one later named Scarface. He's been dead for a long, long time. He was the last black-footed ferret captured from the wild at Matitsi, Wyoming in 1987. He lived in captivity for a number of years. We were able to collect his semen and freeze it in liquid nitrogen, and then basically take that frozen product and inseminate one of the females here and she gave birth. So we now currently have his genes represented uh, in the population. The Institute has taken artificial insemination and genome resource banking technologies developed for humans and used them to breed endangered species. The methods have been adopted by zoos worldwide. While scientists have had success stories, they face many challenges. Amy Johnson, a graduate student, is looking into the reproduction of Maine wolves. All but 14% of the sperm are abnormal, largely because of inbreeding. I spend a lot of time analyzing sperm from the Maine wolves. So see some sperm that have two heads, or they have two tails, or sometimes they'll even just have a tail that coils around. And all of these abnormalities are things that could prevent the sperm from fertilizing the egg. The Institute can't save all animals. Some liken its work to playing God. 3,200 acres is a large, large bit of land, but there are a number of species that need help. And uh, that's when you have to make those tough decisions based on budgets and space um, to try and get basically the biggest bang for our buck. The successes are particularly sweet. The scientists savored a recent birth of the Dama gazelle and are starting to reintroduce them into the wild in Africa. The same week the gazelle was born, the zoo delighted visitors 
by introducing two cheetah cubs to the public for the first time. The cubs were born at the Institute in April to five-year-old first-time mom Allie through a cesarean section, a procedure rarely performed on cheetahs. You can catch the cubs playing in their yard daily at 10 a.m. and 1 p.m.